like to express that I am really happy to see that lately civil society has been recognized on the international level and I hope it will be also recognized locally as an important actor in development as a key to shape policies for the future, to help and participate in implementing a world agenda that can influence and share to minimize torture of people, maintain human rights, and free this world from want and fear. Really, to begin with, I would like to express that I am not going to corner myself in answering the questions in your form. But I would like to say my experience through civil society voluntary work across the last maybe 60 years of my life. Really, foundations had made practices here in Jordan in their fields, contributing to minimize mankind problems. So I really would like to see the day when these foundations, these voluntary foundations, can continue and be sustainable for the service of the coming years for the different uh, uh, those who need help. Civil societies really experienced a good way in attracting donations and in minimizing costs and maximizing the outcomes and made cooperation between the different sectors. It would be very nice when on the global level such examples are copied in order to provide valuable lessons for global efforts. Because really, civil societies can take risks and have ability to innovate. And they can surpass time and routine. They have solutions for needs and uh, when they cover the expenses, they cover in less costs. So such examples can be good for peer learning. When there is global participation, the help is there. Because we in developing countries have not enough budgets to cover our services, while developed countries have. The developing countries have the manpower, and developed countries can do a lot in partnership to support debts, to support financing, and not in the concept of aid, but in the concept of participating, covering the, la the uh, shortage found in these 
foundations. It's important to have foundations committed to achieve the targets and to offer the services for the less fortunate. I, as one of the workers in the civil society on voluntary level, maybe through the last six decades of my life, really experienced a lot. First of all, I can cover my work in the uh, civil society for the care of the senior citizens. The first foundation that I initiated with my colleagues was in the year 1971, when I founded the first society for the care of the senior citizens. And we began for initiating the first golden age home in the country. It took us around nine years till it came to service. In the, in the year 1979. Our first experience was the Golden Age home that began receiving clients in the year 1979. Those clients are mostly health deteriorated, lonely, and a limited uh, capability. So, in the first 15 years, it, it, it was never full. We have a room for 110 clients. Because the Jordan community feel it's a shame to put their old uh, beloved mothers and fathers in institutions. They must be taken care within the family. So we only receive those who have no intimate people who can take care of them, those who are really health deteriorated that need full uh, follow-up through the, uh, around the hour, and they have uh, limited resources of money. But th since the year 2000, it mostly was full. Now we have around 130 clients within the house, mostly men. We have 88 men, while we have only 40 to 43 women. And they stay there till, till the end of their life, because they can't go back anywhere and they are very feeble that they can't leave, they can't help themselves. They need a full staff to take care of them. We have around 70 workers, beginning from a doctor around the hour till nursing and those who take care of them. They really live very nice life with love and uh, good care. The other experience we did is the Munta Darrubad al Kibar, this one that is hosting you now. It's called the uh, uh, Senior Forum for the Old Age. It is done for the help of old people who live with their families. Though they are loved and they care to keep them with them, with their children and grandchildren, but they are not happy because really the lost feeling of uh, uh, producing, they feel now they are consuming, not producing. Their uh, 24 hours 
are not filled with any agenda. Everybody in the family, the man and the wife, are working outside, and the children immersed in their programs. But when uh, they really feel abandoned, so we said that the White Vet Society, which I initiated and chair up till now, across the last 45 years, that lent a hand for the less privileged, they must also lend a hand for the senior citizens with their families. It is really a social responsibility, hand in hand with their families. We have here a library, a clinic, a multi-purpose uh, court and a multi-purpose room for activities. We receive poets, we receive cultural activities, and we prepare for them visits and tours within the country and outside. We offer meals with affordable prices. We are for service, not for gains. And we have a membership through this club. It is really accepted by the community. And I think such a, a club must be multiplied everywhere in Amman, in the governorates, and maybe copied for outside. Really, voluntary work can offer different services. They can, hand in hand with developed countries, do much. They can cover debt problems. They can help in trading systems. They can make benefits in technology. They can help in carrying information and communication. They can steer resources. They can share risks and responsibilities. And at the end, they have the benefit. They promote change. They improve equality. They realize human rights and build next links of de development and mobilize resources by partnership. They can allocate help for the base needs in the country. They can finance, not as debts, just as complementary uh, help. We know nowadays that the Millennium Developing Goals begin with the pledge to uphold principles to enhance human dignity, equality, uh, also free the world from poverty. There are some important gaps that must be covered. Hunger, poverty, health, environment, primary education, gender equality, water resources, maternal mortality and child mortality, ozone depleting, and marine problems. All these problems, all these gaps, can be covered hand in hand by the help or the partnership between developing countries and developed countries. Really, civil society helped through my work as a field worker in maybe four areas. First, help of the old age in a nursing home, help for the old age in a day club center. The third is helping the psychiatric 
rehabilitation in a center called Asaf Saf Center, which began receiving uh, clients since 2003. We try to help these psychiatric patients by uh, improving their um, behavior, uh, enhancing their personality, and giving them uh, vo vocational empowerment. This center have seven workshops, carpentry, uh, cane works, computer, uh, computer uh, learning, dressmaking, music, and agriculture. A each person can select what he wants, and they really live a nice life there. So as when they become better after the acute case, they can be integrated again in the community, and they can cover their own expenses and their families. The fourth uh, experience is the, the alliance of the civil society uh, for the help of patients to have good uh, med medical and uh, medicine care in, in, with the right uh, quality and the right service. This alliance we are very proud of because it represents all societies that take care of the different, uh, the different uh, <laughs> the different diseases. diseases, and also we have different uh, uh, researchers and uh, uh, maybe uh, decision makers and l lawyers and uh, consumers as members. It will do a very good job to advocate patients. This CSO Alliance is, uh, began in the year 2010, and now it is doing a promising work for the help of patients to live a good, decent life. Very good question, really. Uh, Dr. Mu'min is uh, the vice chair, chair of this uh, alliance. I am the chair. We tried hardly to meet uh, uh, the parliamentarians mm. and to <coughs> be named in the, uh, the bureau of decision makers because all the bureau rep represent all sectors, but not the patient. We strived a lot to have this membership in this uh, uh, parliament bureau. We didn't succeed last year, but we are now promised to, to be represented. Because most of the patients uh, feel very bad because they can't pay for their medicines, mm -hmm. especially the late medicines are very expensive. And they are not included in uh, it, uh, mean, uh, insurance. insurance. Mm -hmm. So our role will be to try to interfere in these decision, decisions to let these patients meet their needs. Mm -hmm. 
maybe two days ago, we made a, a meeting here, followed by uh, Iftar Ramadan. Uh, iftar is not uh, the, the, what we aimed at. We aimed how to make contacts. Mm -hmm. And really, we were promised to be represented in the High uh, Bureau of Health. Mm -hmm. We, we really we represent power because around 30 members in this alliance, all representing uh, patients in the different sectors, El cancer, psychology, uh, old age. I can give you the number of all the uh, who are represented in this. This, if it is copied, all over the world, it will be really a success. Also to take care of psychiatric patients, mm -hmm. those who uh, the community mostly feel they are good for nothing. We believe they are human beings and they must take the care that any human being can reach. Mm -hmm. And my experience showed that even they are uh, not feeling well and uh, in some periods of their life and their health is deteriorating, but there is a great progress after rehabilitation. Um, another question, um, if you are in New York, um, what message or a key message or a recommendation would you would you give for the post twenty fifteen development? From my experience, I am chairing an institution covering mostly a good part of the Jordanian need in caring with the old age and senior citizens. Everything is going very beautifully, except the financing. We have a yearly shortage. And I don't know how to cover this shortage. We ask donations, we make activities. But at the end, there is a 25% of the budget shortage. I think it is nothing this amount, which may be 100,000 Jordanian dinners, to be moved from developed countries to developing. It's not an aid, it's a just complementary need. So I would like to say donation for services is very important. And developing countries, especially those people who, who are in need, old people who have no uh, income, there is a great need of help by a percentage as a complementary, a complementary to the budget would be of great importance. At the other side, even helping in technology. For example, in the last year, one of our problems is to buy cameras so as to oversee the three stories of the house. It's around 3,000 square meters. Up till now, I have, I can't find anyone who can cover to buy these cameras. We made a study. It only needs one, uh, 15,000 GDs, but up till now, we can continue serving, but we can't buy new technology to cover our needs. So, you, there are two ways of help, by complementary aid and by 
e, teknoloji. I am afraid really. I feel that I can't give for only some few years because uh, uh, our our uh, capabilities as are depleting. <laughs> I look to my family. I have six uh, daughters-in-law. Each of them is doing hard work to gain bread, to help the family. How can she give time? So I think in the coming years, institutionalized foundations must have paid workers. I myself, across the last six years, offered my work and capabilities voluntarily for nothing. And I live every minute of this work, day and night, so as it goes smoothly. I think we can't f find people in the coming years to give all the, their time to follow up. They can give partially one hour a week, two hours daily for those who can have time, but you can't find volunteers unless it is paid work.